All right, all right. Great to have you all here. Great to have you all here in this book presentation, online book presentation. The interesting thing is for my Dutch book presentation, I had to do it online because of COVID. And while internationally, I, I, I prefer to do it online because more people can join for this hour just from their desk, from their office. So let some people, more people in. So welcome, welcome to the Effortless Entrepreneur. Um, and what I will do with you in the coming 45 minutes, hour, whatever it takes, I'm going to take you through the process of writing this book. And at the same time, I'm going to explain more about the six accelerators, the success accelerators that I describe in my book. So that you get a little bit of an idea what the book is about. Um, and as of today, you can buy that on Amazon or you can buy it uh, on my website. If you go to my website, um, I'll send you a link, then you can buy it and, and also find the link to Amazon. So that makes it easier for you. Um, but first of all, I think it's interesting to see who is here. Um, so why don't you put in the chat one, the country you're from, or the city you're from, and maybe also the city you're in right now, because I know that people are in different countries. So put it in the chat so we get an idea who is who, is who and who is where. Amersfoort, the Netherlands. And then we have Vienna, Austria, Helmut, yes, I was just there. Dominique in Belgium, Rinske in Apeldoorn, the Netherlands, which is just around the corner. Marleen in Maasluis, the Netherlands. And then we have Natalia, Natalia from Zurich, originally from Bulgaria. That's actually where my whole international career started with you, uh, Natalia, or almost. <laughs> Italy. Vercelli, close to Turin and Milan, French, but Competta in Spain. Okay, Remy, welcome, bonjour. All right. Cool. Um, so, and that's what I like about this international work is that it is, there, yeah, people from all over the world are interested in doing business differently. And that's also why I travel around the world. I give workshops, trainings, uh, online webinars, because I think it is time to do business in a different way. I think it's time to find a way of doing business where we, how do I say, we operate from a place of unity that everybody and everything and every, yeah, the whole world is connected instead of being separated. Um, and my book is a contribution to that and also my work. So how did it start actually? Um, oh, I need to let people in. How did it start? It started, of course, with my mother and my father uh, when they got me in 1970, 51 years ago. That's when it started with me. So that's where the story starts. Um, but it also started with my dad. My dad, he passed away in 2003. And just before he passed away, he started a little bookshop. He went to all these flea markets and then he sold books, all spiritual books. And back then I thought, oh, those silly books. I was not really into that. Um, but now I realize that that's like a stepping stone for me, or it's like a, well, something that I can use in, in, in writing my book and also in uh, yeah, telling what, I'm, what I have to tell in the world. Uh, my brother is joining also, so very cool. Um, okay, so that was in 2002, 2001. And I, I wasn't even thinking I, um, about writing a book. I was not even um, having my own company. I was still working for a boss and small children and not thinking about anything else and just doing my work, which I loved, by the way. But, and then in 2007, I started my company. Uh, business intuition in the Netherlands called Intuitive Ondernemen. And then, well, how things go is that in 2000, I think it was 2014, 15, I decided I need a book. I need to write a book because if you write a book, you're an expert and you get this expert status and that's what all the marketeers tell you. And I had met this publisher, Sietz is her name, and I had an appointment with her. We drank a cup of tea. And I said, I want to write a book. She said, well, why do you want to write a book? I said, well, because it gives me an ex expert status and I'm really the expert. 
She says, that's so energetically so thin. She says, it's not going to work. I said, well, it's not going to work. Why not? It's marketing. It's good marketing. She says, no, no. I'm not going to publish a book which is not really fully yours. And then she said the words which I will remember, well, a long time. She said, it's not about a book, you wanting to write a book. It's about a book wanting to be written, written by you. And I thought, what? How can a book want, wants me to write it? I thought, I didn't get it. But here I didn't get it. But here I sensed that, ah, oh, there is the, some truth in that. So actually nothing happened. I went home, she went home and... Um, I thought, okay, I'm not going to write a book. We had some ideas about some online trainings I could do, but that didn't work out either. It was just like, there was a seed planted. And this for me is an example of the accelerator surrendering. I'll share my screen to share about the surrendering. Because surrendering for me is to surrender to this greater flow, a greater force, some greater something in your company. And this, in this way, in a book, um, by not saying I want something and it's me creating everything, but saying, okay, so there's a book wanting me to write it. Um, and I'm not very good at surrendering, but I, I felt that this was the way to go. It is about me surrendering to the book that is waiting for me or, or, or not, but I was waiting for a book to come to me and say, okay, I want to be written by you. So that was uh, how it started. And then I think it was 2017, 17, 2017. I've been to Bulgaria to where I met with Natalia and things started rolling and internationally, which was very interesting. And then I got this email saying, do you want to be participate in a European project? I thought European project, what are European projects? He said, well, there's money and you need to do something with constellations. It's about entrepreneurship and young people. I said, okay, whatever, let's do it. So <laughs> that way I, I got into this project where we created a methodology for youth workers to work on uh, entrepreneurial skills for, for youth. And we work with um, all kinds of intuitive methods like business constellations. And then I was looking for, uh, I was writing the reading list. So what kind of books could people read to know more about this topic? And I was searching for a book about entrepreneurship, systemic work, constellations, holistic approach. And I thought, huh, I cannot find it. And then I remembered Sitz's words. She said, ah, this is the book that wants to be written by me. So, and I still get the goosebumps. It was a clear moment like, okay, so this is what she meant. And then I decided, oh, I'm gonna write this book. So, um, yeah, how do you write a book? There are different ways of doing it. I already saw, saw different approaches to it. I contacted the publisher again and she said, well, there are two ways of doing it. You might create a structure and then you fill in the structure and then you create the whole book or you just, sit and flow and write whatever you want to write. Well, the, the last one sounded better to me because I'm not really a structured person. Um, but all right, I did have to, uh, yeah, I had, did have to do something. So that's about action. So how do you take the right actions? So let me share the screen about action. So writing a book is not about, it. you have like this goal, but I didn't have like the 20 steps to write a book, or I didn't have like uh, the milestones, I need to be ready with page 55 at the November 1st. It was just, I want to write a book and it takes whatever it takes. And I'm, well, the thing, way I work is like, okay, let's, let's do that quickly because I'm a quick person. Well, it didn't turn out that way. Um, but, how it works is that you connect with the book and then connect with the tasks or with the first task at, at hand. So it's not about making a plan, but it's more about, so what is my first next step? And it is like building a bridge while crossing it. 
which is a kind of scary and at the same time it's liberating it's, it's fantastic to do that so um that's how i started writing the book and then i was like in two three months i was like oh yes my first manuscript is ready and, and i sent it to the publisher and said okay i'm ready and i was kind of a little bit scared or a little bit anxious so what's going to happen and it took some time and it took some time and i had to wait and then i said okay what so i, I thought yes i'm gonna I'm gonna send her this email. What, what do you think about it? And she said, "Yeah." <laughs> I still remember. She said, "Yes, there are still some things, but the book is still talking to me." I said, the book is talking to you. But from constellations, I realized that everything has like a soul. It's like something that you, yeah, you can put it in a constellation. You can, you can see it, and you can give it a voice. And she was talking to my book, and the, and the book hadn't finished talking to her. Um. So then finally when it had, she came to me or she called me and she said, yeah, it's not a very nice message, um, but it's, it's in the book, the book it's there, but it's not coming out. I mean, I don't know if you understand, she said, but I said, yeah, there's this knot in my, in my, uh, in my belly. And she says, that knot is something that I can, can taste all over your book. So there is something which is not flowing right. And she said, so maybe you need to start looking at yourself. Maybe you need to start jumping into the process. Because I already told her that writing a book is a whole personal development process. And then I thought, but not for me. So I just started writing. And, uh, but then I, I decided, okay, so there's something needs to be looked at here. So that is the, also one of the accelerators is... Personal. There's always something personal or something you have to do as, a, as an entrepreneur, and in, in my case, as a writer. Um, and what I decided to do, I decided to look at it as, a, as I always do. So I used a constellation for it. And I always say, can you do a constellation for yourself? Well, no, yes, sometimes, but there are some, quite some limitations to that. But I, I just start doing it. I said, okay, I put some papers on the floor representing the book, representing the audience, the readers, um, a piece of paper representing uh, myself. And I stood there and I thought, okay, so what's happening here? And I felt that my mom and dad need to be in the constellation, always. And so I put my a piece of paper for my mother. I put a piece of paper for my father. And then I felt in the back, oh, okay, so there's spirituality, like the, the whole source of spirituality, and there's the whole source of management, organization, business administration. And then all the way in the back was my wife, as a kind of anchor point for me. So it felt quite right, but at the same time, I felt like I need to, um, it felt like I need to please both my mom and my dad with this book. And then I realized, okay, no, this is my book. And I'm not going to please my dad. I'm not going to please my mom. It's just not about pleasing any, both, any one of them. It's about going my own path. And I can still feel it. Yeah, it was like this decision, like, okay, so it's not about pleasing my mom and dad. It's about my own path and, and going forward. So, and, and that's with all kinds of of, of decisions of, of processes when you are doing business it's it, you sometimes have to go through a an inner process in order for an outer process to evolve and to to are you in line? to flow more freely it's using. um somebody joined who has not turned off their microphone so please if you have questions by the way then you can turn off your microphone and just ask a question or put it in the chat i'll also see the chat and feel free to interrupt me. But there was also a place for Q&A at the end. So that was when I did the constellation and I really felt like, okay, so this is what I need to do. And then one morning I woke up and just be between this waking or being asleep and waking up, that's a very interesting time for your intuition to kick in. And intuition in my book, I write it as a part of the personal chapter. It's about your inner self and it's about developing your intuition. 
intuition being the 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 uh, gateway actually to this larger field of knowledge to this this layer of unity and what happened i saw this um, star pentagon star or jewish star david star and i thought oh, why am i seeing this and then i thought okay so so okay so it's like six points it's like six aspects and later i call them excess uh, success accelerators and then i thought okay six and then in the middle was success um and i thought wow wow now i have, I have a kind of structure because in the beginning i was just writing on wow there it had some structure but not really structure and this gave me a structure of clustering my ideas of writing in a specific um, topic and the interesting thing about this this star is that when i get at the end of when, when my book was finished i wanted to use like a powerpoint presentations and i changed the shape of it i thought well, okay this has to do with the war the nazis and with the jews and i don't want to be connected with that but then i thought no 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 this was my intuition it was it was a sign from my intuition that this is the picture you need to use so i well, actually two or three weeks ago i decided i'm, I'm going to use it anyway because it's also about connecting uh, heavens with the earth. It's about spirituality and, and down to earth doing your business. And it's about inside and outside. So there's a lot more to it than, than the war and Jews, but it's, it's, it's from, from far, far away, uh, from long ago. Um, so let me see. So then I had this idea, I had the structure, there was a book that wanted to be written by me, and now I could, I could really sense the flow. Um, and I started writing, and I didn't have like a time schedule. Some people say you need to write eight hours in a, in a, in a row, or you need to write two hours every day, and that doesn't work for me. And that's also one of the success accelerators, is time, because time can be so screwed up um, so you need to have a relationship with time which makes it easier to to flow and to to do the right things at the right moment so what i did i just followed my inner guidance there or my um time so yeah whenever i felt like writing i started writing and when i didn't feel like writing i didn't start writing so I really followed my, the flow of the book, the flow of the information and my own flow, which didn't mean that I, I sometimes didn't want to write because sometimes oh, I have to, it feels like the right time to write, but I'm not feeling like it or I don't want to. So this, this serving the time is about really tuning into what energy or what moment is, is it now and what yeah, what, what can be possible today. And if it's writing and you don't want to write, then you just surrender again and say, okay, but it's, it's the time to write. So it's distinguishing your own inner uh, resistance uh, from it's not the right time because sometimes you feel this inner resistance because it's not the right time. So that's, that's well, that's a, a kind of something you need to play with. Um, and then it was very interesting. I finished my manus manuscript, the, the second one. I sent it to the publisher. And then she came back, she, she, she called me, she said, well, the editors have looked at it and it's, it's just in a bad shape. It, it, it's very difficult to edit. It's a lot of work to edit. So we, we are a little hesitant to publish it because um, yeah, it's just not really, well, the structure is not good enough. And I thought, ah, what's happening here? And then I looked at the, version she sent to the to the uh, to the editor which was the old old version which one was completely not good it was the one before the constellation before everything so i said to her why what did you do you sent the wrong version and then i realized okay so maybe no i, I did not then actually when i did my dutch presentation i realized i looked at the times and this was like the beginning of 2020 remember it was like february and, and something what can happen is what they call in the systemic world parallel processes. 
and parallel processes is when something happens between you and in my case the publisher which is actually a reflection of something larger that is happening and here there was like some disturbance there was like this things were mixed up and messed up and one month later we were in total lockdown and it was this covid virus running around the earth so actually this was already uh, resonating there the interaction between me and her and she with the designer was already resonating with some kind of disturbance in the larger field say it or um but it's good to realize that you cannot I, I wasn't looking at it like okay i blame you you're the it's your fault and why do you do this and no it's about so what's happening here and that's also something if you do business in, a, in an intuitive way in an effortless way um it is better to look at okay so what is this like what is this symptom telling us and in my book i explain that in the chapter about customers because also when you talk about customers um there is this yeah actually what what happens when you do something for a client or a customer is that the whole world of this customer is connected with your world you're actually becoming part of the system of your customer and I always use the example when you provide services or products for the army industry or the weapon industry is that you are also connected with the death and also connected with all the protection that these weapons offer um, and and yeah it's that's a, that and, and it, well, with weapons is quite it's about life and death but also with other products and services you need to realize that what they call the parallel process is that you actually invite the world of your client into your world and and, and sometimes the, there can be a reflection of what's happening uh, by the end customer with the end customers can, can reflect in the relationship you have with your client okay so we sent the right version to the public to the, the, the editors she asked me to pay a little bit more because it was still not very editable but then there was the book um so i had the book launch for this book in november 2020 um and then already i felt like I want to I want to have the English version actually or already in the beginning I thought this, there needs to be an English version and it's not only because I think it's very smart to do but it's also because the root of this book as you I told in the beginning the root of the book was when I started to write the reading list and for an English book about uh, entrepreneurship and systemic work so the root of this book was in the English language field so I started, yeah, how do we do that? Translating, am, am I gonna translate it? Is, am I gonna use somebody to translate it? Um, and I decided to, um, to try two things. But because I found an editor that says, I can edit your English, and that way it will become more like a book written by you instead of somebody else translating your book. So what I did, I, I translated 800 words of my book into English and send it to her and I I took the same 800 words and, and sent the Dutch words to uh, a translate and then I got back to both translations and it was so such a difference the the, the, the English translation my English translation that was edited it was smooth it was well I liked it a lot it was really my book and the other one was just it was an okay translation or maybe even a good translation but it was just not flowing the way I wanted it to flow um, and then it is about money which is also one of my success accelerate actually the last one because um, I asked the people to, to, to do the translation and I wanted to pay for it because if you pay for it then there is this fair exchange of money and uh, of giving and taking and if you pay for it you can expect that they give the best um, so that's also with money it is about if yeah it's, it's love actually it's the expression of gratitude and love and if you don't pay money for something then it's not yeah you can expect something less back and it's not always money 
that balances the giving and taking. It can also be something else. Um, and also a thing with money, because the one that was translating or editing my translation was at the same price as the one translating the Dutch to English. So I had to do a lot more work and pay the same amount of money. But then at the same time, I felt like, okay, but this is what I want to do because this is giving me the best translation. So I just decided to use hire the, uh, the editor. And then again, time kicked in and time, I think it's a very interesting topic. Maybe I'm gonna give a whole workshop on that because there is a certain rhythm Everything has a rhythm. So also this English translation has a, has a rhythm. And here it was the rhythm that I was finished, I think the beginning of this year. So he would say, send it to the editor. It would take her two weeks and then send it to the designer. And, and March at last, I would have had my English translation. That was what my expectations were. And then I sent it to the translator and then, or the editor and she was working on it. And then she gave some, she, she, she sent me something back. And, and then suddenly I didn't hear anything from her. So, oh. And I waited because I was busy also with other things. Um, but then I sent her a message. Oh no, I sent her an email, she didn't react. And then it turned out that she had thought she had sent it to me and then her computer crashed, uh, but she hadn't sent it to me. So the, her translation or her editor, edited version was lost. There was a virus not only the virus, the, the COVID virus, but there was a virus in the file. So she had to re-edit it again. Um, so it took like a month or even two months longer than, I, than we expected. And then I sent it to the designer. And for some reason, she didn't have time. Blah, blah, and it took another two months before the designer had, had finished it. And it, well, it's beautiful. And she helped me a, a lot with the Amazon stuff because it's not very easy. But then in June, half of June, it was finished. So I thought, well, no, I'm not going to do the book presentation and launch the book beginning of, of beginning of the summer. So that's why we're here now. So, um, oh yeah, there's one more thing. Uh, also about these parallel processes and who do you want to do business with? I was thinking of Amazon. It's, it's the best way to, pro, pro, to, to sell your books because they are all over the world. But at the same time, Amazon is not a company that I like very much. So it's a very difficult situation for me because I decided to do, to, to work with Amazon. So, and at the same time, you also, if you work with somebody, even if it's a huge company, you need to feel yeah, love, not, not like the, the, the love of, of, of two people loving each other, but it's more like the love for you, for their work and the way they work. Um, and I, I must say, I can feel that the way they have set up everything, it's beautiful and it's, it's so automated and it's, it's wonderful. But the way they treat their, their employees it's, it, and the way they just enter the market and, and crush the market is not really my way of working. So here you have to, and you have to include everything that's part of the systemic work is that you say, okay, when I do business with, with, with Amazon, I also include that I am contributing to people not being paid well or not being treated well. And I'm also contributing to a huge company trying to take over the, the market. Okay, so that's what I, what, that's what I do. All right, so are there any questions about these six accelerators? Any questions about my uh, process? Just let me know. Let me see, I'm gonna put it in gallery view again. So is there anything that you would like to ask or share? Yes, Mariana. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, how did you reach to the States to agree that you will work with them? Because like I would have the same kind of questions in myself and to reach the state to agree that you actually will in the end do it with Amazon too. How do I agree with whom? With yourself that you will do the book with Amazon in the end. Did you do a constellation about that so you can mm -hmm. reach? Well, it was a little bit double. I, 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 I really, what I did, I really connected with Amazon and I, I did like a meditation to connect with it and just feel like how, how bad does it feel? And I was also a bit practical, like, okay, so what other options do I have? It's like finding yeah. a publisher in every country. Um, so sometimes she, well, in my case, I felt I had to use Amazon. 
And okay. then I decide, okay, so then I, I, I also agree and I take the responsibility for everything that, that, that brings along. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. No questions. Well, I wanted to show you the book, but I mean, it's on Amazon. So it's, <laughs> and whenever you, 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 you um, order it, it gets printed and then it gets sent to, sent to you. So today I tried to order some, what they call author copies. And then it said, well, we cannot deliver to your address. So it's very interesting. I have to look into that. Um, but maybe what I would like you to do is I would like to bring a toast to this, to this book, The Effortless Entrepreneur. Um, and maybe you can write like a wish you have for the book in the chat. And then you take your glass and you write the chat and you say, okay, so this is what I wish for the book, The Effortless Entrepreneur on its journey into the world. So write in the chat and then we can celebrate the birth of this English version of my book. All right. Inspire many people, yes. Effortless journey, yes. I hope so. Many, many readers. Any I'm not gonna lie. In the chat, there's this little icon that says chat. There you can click and then you can, may your book be read by many people. I wish you the book. A lot of interesting people to read you, <laughs> yes. Contribute to a better world, yet yeah, that's also my idea. So we dream to the book and to everything that it will do in the world. Cheers. And if you want to buy the book, and of course you want to buy the book. Prost. I guess you get today. Okay. Gezondheid. This is where you can buy the book. Good luck. There's no alcohol in. Prost. <laughs> and the book. I mean, I've also added a lot of exercises. I have a lot of added a lot of um, examples. So it's really a working book. It's almost like a workshop in a book form. And if you say, well, it feels like more, then you can follow an online training facilitating business constellations, which starts at the 28th of September. You can come to Dubai, where I will give an in-person training if COVID allows us. You can do individual coaching. Just go to my website, intuition-business.com and with events, then you see all my events. Tomorrow I have a webinar about facilitating business constellations. So I really, yeah, would like to do more in the world and, and share all my ideas about how you can do business in an effortless way and at the same time, but an intuitive way and making the world a better place as well. Okay, well, then I would like to say thank you all for being here and I say cheers and have a great day, have a great night, have a great whatever time zone you're in. And Good hope... luck. Okay, ciao, ciao, bye bye. Congratulations. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Good luck, Martin. Thank you. Thank you.